the Speak Easily Hour Minute Podcast, Season 1, Episode 3. Last time on the Speak Easily Hour Minute Podcast. Christian, open up. What? Uh, oh my God. Go. You're coming with me. What? Why? I, I, I'm not an illegal alien. I'm a, I'm a Klingon. No. Uh, uh, Jan, are you okay? Stop. <laughs> Don't hurt her. Oh my God. What is going on? Ladies and gentlemen, Russian trolls and uh, Ukrainian flamers, citizens of the internet. I'm Odessa Lil, your mistress of ceremonies. Welcome to the Speak Easily Hour Minute podcast, where the burlesque show that turned into a streaming show that turned into a comedy troupe that turned into a podcast. Please subscribe so we can just start showing up at your house. We're going to do it anyway. So... You might remember last week that um, my my good partner, sometimes my life partner, Klingon Vanna White, was taken. She was taken from us by the American government. And um, sorry, I'm just getting kind of choked up here. But as you well know, there is a crusade against illegal aliens and um, Klingon Vanna White, even though she was married to an earthling, My other life partner, Chucky Davis Jr., um, apparently that criteria just isn't good enough anymore. And um, as a country, we're we're just a fucking racist country. I think we just need to accept it. And we're not ready to, to, with open arms, to embrace alien cultures. And I mean, this is why we have computers. We all know this. We all know this because aliens... Uh, the, the whole reason we have any of the amazing technology is because we, with open arms, allowed foreign aliens to into our universe. And, um, and now fucking Trump is just ruining it and taking all of our aliens away. And um, I just don't know how I'm going to go on without her. Uh, I hope she's okay. I hope that she's listening. Klingon Vanna White, if you're listening... Give me a sign. Get in touch with me. I want to know where you are. A phone call? Wait. Who is it? I'm going to answer. I'm going to answer. Who is this? Yes, I'll accept the phone call. Greetings and salutations, Odessa Little. <gasps> Going on, Vanna White! Yes, it is I. I am calling from a Tijuana payphone. It's very sticky in here, but I but I think it will be fine. In Tijuana, yeah, it is yes. sticky there. Wait, well, what are you doing in Tijuana? Well, um, ICE ICE uh, deported me to Mexico. They thought I was Puerto Rican because um, the original Star Trek, you know, Klingons were Puerto Ricans, um, and also when it was first released, uh, West Side Story was very popular. But so now every time they come across a a um, Klingon, they think they're Puerto Rican, but they didn't want to spend the money to send me to Puerto Rico. So they sent me to Tijuana. Oh, man. What? Yeah. Just, just like Trump. Just like he did his personally, didn't he? He showed up with his flappy head and his weird bald Mr. Potato Head. head. Yeah. Mr. Potato Head showed up and just uh, took you to Tijuana. But I... Um, since you're in Tijuana, could you pick yeah. me up a couple of things? Sure. What? Okay. Um, uh, I was wondering if you could get me some Retin-A, maybe some Prilosec, some tranquilizers. Uh, actually, if they have those horse, horse tranquilizers. Okay. You know, the chewable kind? Uh-huh. Yeah. Just a couple of those. And, I mean, Did you, you want the, po- be- you know, the 20, 0.25 Retin-A or the point? Five or the point, one? Let's let's go point five because I'm kind of in that middle zone. Okay. You know, I'm like, I'm I'm 41. I'm just gonna let everyone know I'm 41 now. So, 
It's like I need basically like a light sandblaster to the face. Not a full-fledged uh, chainsaw yet. Okay. Okay, thanks. I'll get you three tubes. Oh, it's good. You do your whole body. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Maybe you can help me get my back. Um, another phone call. This call will be recorded and monitored. I have a collect call from Shaggy, an inmate at a San Bernardino County detention facility. If you would like to accept this call, please press 4. Uh, yeah, we'll accept. Hey, 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 lady. How you doing? You know, I, I, I'm here. I, I, and you know what? I'm glad it's just you and me now, you know, because... Uh, because uh, it's sad what happened to to to, uh, to to Vanna, but but I think the show would be better if it was just you and me anyway. So so I, you know, you gotta look on the bright side. Uh, Checky, um, yeah. Uh, what? Klingon Klingon is on the line with us. Oh. Checky Davis Jr. Oh, oh hey, how, how you Hi. how you doing? Um, I, I'm in Tijuana. Well, but you knew that already, you're didn't you? In Tijuana? No, I yes. didn't. No, I I figured they sent you to Puerto Rico. Um, oh, you know that's that's where you were supposed to go. But you know, I I guess Tijuana is fine. You know, you, you're gonna help build that wall. Is that is that what you're gonna be doing now? No, I am not not currently building a wall. I am oh. just hanging out in a hotel room in Tijuana. Oh, well, that's oh. um, that's kind of fun, right? Can you also get me a hammock? Oh, sure. Oh, you, you taking yeah. orders? You, you, yeah. You no. You taking orders? Oh. oh. No, I'm not, actually. I'm not. Oh. Oh, and like a box of chiclets. Like, oh, sure. Come on. Yeah. Just, come on. And, like weird colors. Sure. Come on. Send me something, too. I, I want some of those, like, jumping beans. Can you send me some jumping beans? I get I'm really sorry. lonely. I... I get really lonely here in prison, so... So the jumping beans would, would would definitely make me feel good, please, please. I'm sorry, but I, I, I the 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 phone call keeps going in and out when you talk. Ah, nuts! I know what you're doing. Oh, I know what you're doing. But uh, but yeah, but 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 in all honesty, I'm I'm glad you landed on your feet. Not far enough away, but I'm still glad you landed somewhere. Is it Thank sun- you. Is it, is it sunny in Tijuana? Tijuana? Tijuana. Tijuana? Is, is it sunny where you're at? Um, yes, of course it is sunny. It's kind of overcasty here. It's, it's kind of overcasty, you know, in, in, in San Bernardino. But, yeah. Well, no one asked me about Fresno, but it's fucking great here. Well, that's just I great for you. you. Yeah, I don't believe me. <laughs> so, now that we're all back together... And it's a little awkward. Um, what's new? What's new, Shecky? Uh, well, I was just looking at stuff in the news because, like, that's what I do now. I'm very, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very studious. I, I, I sit and I study the news because there's nothing else to do. And I noticed. You know, did you hear the great news? Farmer Bro is going to jail for like seven years. I mean, I know it's probably that's only, all he's getting. Yeah, no, I know it's probably only going to be like six months because it was a white collar criminal, you know, and he stole from like old white people. But still, I mean, that's something, right? You know, <laughs> he stole from all sick people everywhere. No, 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 no. But that's the thing. He he, he didn't go to jail for that. He, got oh. a, he went to jail for defrauding rich white people. They got pissed. They didn't give a fuck about oh, yeah. anybody else. It was like you steal from the white, the rich white people. Then you ask God to go to jail. Then you ask God to pay. <laughs> yeah. Then they yeah they actually take action. Yeah. So uh, so he's gonna he's gonna go to prison. I I, I hope he comes to San Bernardino. Uh, that way I can meet him. <laughs> I got some. I got some. Um, I got some ideas, formological ideas. Um, it's. Uh, I don't want to. Say, I don't. I don't want to say. You know my. Um, my, uh, my. 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 medical. Uh, ideas over the, over the podcast because I know you know big farm is probably listening. Uh, but I. But I have. A, I have a way. You know to to to, to really take away stress. You know, because it's really big here in prison. You know, they probably don't know about it out so, out in, in, in the out in, in the out world, in the real world, or whatever. So, oh, so, there's like a secret stress relieving technique or or substance that you're it's using a in jail. It's a substance. I see. Yeah, 
it's a it's a brown substance that everyone can produce. It's just you have to kind of put a little heat on it, add some uh-huh. stuff, and then and then and then poof, you know. Are, are we talking about waffles stomping again? You know, poop has a lot of applications, and and uh-huh. I think if you know, you know, people in in Europe and and overseas, you know, they have really mastered. You know the, the the love of poop and and all the different you know things that can come from it. I'm just saying. I, I'm just trying to educate, you know, the Western world. And yeah, I think I know. you know, Farmer Bro can do that with me. You know, I, I I think so. Farmer Bro, if you're listening, you know, look me up, bro. Look me up. Send me a letter. I'll send you a letter. We can become pen pals. <laughs> I hope you become roommates. That would be fun too. You know, he's, he's kind of cute. I mean, I hope I mean, you become butt mates. <laughs> so another thing that I, that I that I found out, which was really kind of interesting, is uh, is Lisa Bonet. She's uh, she's back in the news and she's oh? talking about Bill Cosby and, and how she always felt that Bill Cosby had a sinister energy on the set Ooh. of the Cosby show. And, and, and I think that's bullshit. I don't believe that. You know why? I think the sinister energy was coming from Raven Simone. That's the sinister one. No. Raven. Yes. Yeah, so Raven like, Simone. She was. She was in there. I, I think which it was one? A, it was a plot. Which one was Raven? Raven Simone. Uh, Raven Simone was uh, was Denise, who was played by uh, uh, Lisa Bonet. It was her. It, it was her daughter, and that was. Um, oh my God! I'm forgetting the name. I'm, I'm forgetting that little girl's name. It was, Raven. Oh. Wait, not Rudy. See, when Rudy started to get like pubescent, yeah, and weird. They they had to add like an extra cute little person. Yeah, the TV shows do this. Yeah, it's like so. So Raven Simone, that was that was the Cosby Show's Oliver. You know, if you know from a uh, from a uh, uh, the Brady Bunch, cousin Oliver. That that's pretty much what happened. And uh, I can't uh, remember her name. Like I, I I I cannot believe I cannot remember her name in the show. I, I, I think so, I think you know that sinister energy you know is not allowing me to 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 say her name. I don't know, but I think that it was Raven Simone was the sinister one. You know, she had that young that young evil power, and she was just like, "This show's mine now." You know, because if you ever watch if you ever watch like the Cosby Show, when uh, when Raven Simone and Bill Cosby were on screen together, it was, it was like it was like that dark energy was fighting each other. It was like imagine. Um, Imagine, like you know, um, in uh, in Big Trouble in Little China, when yeah. Lo Pan, you know, is, is fighting um, the other guy, and, and they're using their like spiritual cheese and all that. That's what I saw. It's very, it's very weird. Like seriously, watch watch those episodes when they're together. You know, it's like, it's like they're fighting each other psychically. That is so Raven. That that is that. See, and then and then and so Raven, she had psychic powers. See. The Illuminati, <laughs> it's all there. Black Illuminati. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah the was, Black Illuminati. Is yes, it was, it was. It was. It was Bill Cosby. Movies. It was O.J. Simpson. It was Diana Ross, and it was Michael Jackson. That was that. That was the original Black Illuminati before it turned into, <laughs> before it turned into Beyonce, Jay Z, Kanye, and then like Oprah kind of oversees all of it. Who wore like the, the Illuminati mistress. best, though? Say that again. Who did the Illuminati best? Uh, old what? crew or new crew? Uh, well, I would say probably the old crew because they had a little bit more like understanding of like you know Illuminati needs to stay in the shadows. But nowadays, you can't tell you know you can't tell black people nothing, so they're like you know ah yeah you know and and which which which, which leads into you know you got to stay with me, white people. It leads into our discussion. I'm of, uh, of of Black Panther, because Black Panther right. was all about the Black Illuminati. Just saying. So stay tuned. Interesting. Gonna, okay, so gonna yeah, we're going to talk about that movie this episode. We're going to talk about Black Panther. We're also going to have a special guest, which is fasc- fascinating. We're we're allowing an outsider into our little world. They must be uh, really bored. They must be really bored if they want to be on this show. <laughs> <laughs> well, we ain't got no listeners. That's not true. That's not true. We have three listeners. One of them is my uh, is my mom. Yeah, parents don't count. Oh, okay. 
She actually just listens through the door because I'm in, in the basement here. I'm pre- uh, no, no, and I'm pretty sure that that before Klingon Vanna White was taken away, she had she had her she had her like her, her computer going. So I'm sure the cats are listening. Well, that actually brings brings us to our visitor who happens to be watching the cats while Klingon Vanna White's out of town. The one and the only Pickles Kentaro burlesque dancer and also the mastermind behind the all weird al burlesque troupe titan nerdy and uh she's gonna call in um anytime pickles we were just talking about you hello odessa how are you oh uh, yeah doing all right doing all right what's new um, I'm currently covered in a uh, pussy. Um, there are so many cats here. I, I, I don't think that there are <laughs> enough lint rollers that will ever fix my clothing. <laughs> Imagine getting that stuff in your hair. Like, it was, it, 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 getting that stuff in your mouth. Like, that was, that, that was life living with Klingon Vanna White. This pussy Shecky, hair in my mouth. in my mouth. Yes. In my mouth all the time. Nothing like mouth. waking up with like a cat hair just like right in your eyeball. You just oh, like yes. pull it out. Um, cool. That's so cool. So you're hanging out with the KKK. <laughs> yes, I am. I, okay. I am knee deep, knee deep in it. Um, that's right. So, so Klingon, did you give her a bunch of special instructions? Of course, of course. Um, she is supposed to clean the the litter box. Um, like, I think at least six times a day because there are um, 30 and a half cats and um, she's supposed to keep the water running in the bathroom so that they could drink from the faucet. You know how cats do. So there's there's always a line of at least six cats waiting to use the faucet in the bathroom. <laughs> so I have a question. So you said 30 and a half cats is like one of those cats, one of those munchkin cats. You only count what, like half a cat or. Um, well, it, yeah, it's a, it's kind of a munchkin cat, but it also has its back legs on wheels. So it's a, um, yeah, it's a bipedal, so like a, like a low rider cat. cat. Yeah, like a low rider cat. Okay. <laughs> Those things are so cute. Oh my god. I I have a cat that's on hydraulics, but you don't hear me talking about it. Wah, wah. What is it? What is? Or were you talking about your pussy? It's on hydraulics. That's what. That's yeah. how she's so popular. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Can we just cut that out? Uh, anyway, <laughs> so pickles. Um, what? Where are you? Where are you living these days when you're not uh, overseeing the KKK for Klingon Ban White? Um, so when I'm not knee deep in pussy, um, yeah. I currently reside in um, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Wow. I know, right? It's it's so exciting. That is pretty exciting. And cold. I bet it's cold. It is a cold unlike any cold I have ever felt before. Yeesh. For just really? like for shits and giggles, like what's the degree right now? Um, right now it's not too bad. I think let me check. Um let me check what the temperature is back home. It is uh thirty degrees out. Oh, and Lord. I have to tell you, I have grown a thick skin. It was about thirty degrees out yesterday and I went out without a coat on because <gasps> it, it felt positively balmy. <laughs> I guess you kind of get acclimated to it, you know. I, but you know, I guess people get acclimated to their surroundings, you know. Because like in the shower, I used to like be timid and always have a towel around here, around around me. But now I just walk around full bush, you know, swinging in the wind. You know, people give me thumbs ups. It's great. You know, you, you kind of get used to it. That's a really great anecdote about getting acclimated to something. Thank like you. very, it's a very visual anecdote. <laughs> Thank you. As opposed to pickles, thick skin, which I'm tr- also trying to imagine. <laughs> <laughs> How thick is your skin these days? Um, my skin is so thick. It's it's like I've got a suit of vibranium on. Wow! Black Panther, love it. <laughs> I'm sure what? it's luxurious. Yeah. What do you wear when you go outside? Um, 
if it's over 15 degrees, it's usually just like jeans and a sweater. Um, if it's under, I have several coats. Um, the day that it was negative 22, um, and that is without the wind chill. So without the wind chill, it was about negative 35 out. Uh, I wore pretty much everything I own. That is not a temperature. It that should be real. Be. What is oh. it again? Um, it, the worst day was it was negative 25 out. And that is without a wind chill. So that was the actual like air temperature. But with the wind chill, it felt like negative 35, 40. So it's like, wow. Yeah, yeah, you get warnings on your phone. It's like if your skin is exposed for more than 10 minutes, it will fall off. Oh, yeah, I'm good. So, I'm wait, good. So I'm not leaving. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not going there. They, they send the warnings to your phone, like, warning, citizen, you should not um, vacate your premises at currently because it is too cold outside. Is that Pretty much. They send you warnings about, you know, if you're going to go out, make sure you bundle up because, you know, it. you can get frostbite. Your exposed skin will, will frostbite in, in about 10 minutes. Yeah, it's all wear pants. Yes. And, and many, many, many layers. <laughs> Which is really funny because I tend to be more of a nudist. So, like, I've never had to wear this many clothes in my entire life, and it's kind of killing me. Yeah, so I'm not going to go visit you, just FYI. You know, just, this is not um, the summer is lovely, actually. Shecky, when you get out of prison, um, you should come for the summer months. I mean, okay. we have the Minnesota State Fair, which is amazing. Um, and it's, it is really beautiful. It makes the six months of living in an icy hell uh, almost worth it. Oh, well, the big upsides. Nothing. Nothing is worth it. Nothing is worth that. I mean, how do you even know the difference between, like, negative 10 and negative 35 degrees? Can you tell the difference? Um, I can't, actually. I remember the day that it was negative 25 out. The next day I went out, and it was, I think it was, like, zero. And I was like, oh, my God, it feels so good. I I was, (laughs) this is amazing. (laughs) Wow. I, I just don't think humans are meant to live in this. But, um. You know, whatever whatever you're into, man. Exactly. It's good for now. Herbert. That's scary. <laughs> okay, we're going to go to a quick commercial break and come back and talk with the amazing Pickles Kentaro. Greetings and salutations. Now new to the market in Klingon Vanna White's pantheon of products, Klingon Vanna White aspirational figure with removable grape-flavored Klingdong. Choking hazard, not recommended for stupid children. Fly around in your pink bird of prey, disco lights, mirrored ceiling, and wall-to-wall shag carpet. Invite Klingon Vanna White's friends with the Clowns and Blow expansion set to get down with a decadent drug-fueled disco orgy. Add even more fun with the optional stripper pole accessory and see Barbie let loose after two highballs and a thick-ass rail off Klingon Vanna White's boobs. Klingon Vanna White and her BFFs never want the party to end, and neither will you, kids. Klingon Vanna White aspirational figure products all sold separately. Kids, run to your parents and start screaming until they buy them all for you right now! We're back with more Speak Easily Hour Minute podcast. Today, we have our first guest ever on our podcast, Pickles Kentaro. Pickles Kentaro is the fearless leader of Titan Nerdy, the first and only all Weird Al burlesque troupe. She loves hot air ballooning, fondue, men who aren't afraid to cry. She founded Titan Nerdy because, frankly, the world needs more Weird Al. She also really does love spam. (laughs) Who doesn't? Known as the gherkin with a merkin, Pickles Kentaro is here to make the world a weirder place and to get naked, preferably at the same time. Pickles, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks for being had. (laughs) So, Pickles... I, I, I've known you since you were just starting out as a, a baby burlesque dancer. And, um, and now you are like a world-traveling um, glamazon of burlesque, if I may say that. Aww. And uh, you have this, the funniest acts and, um, 
and you're a lot of fun to be with. And we actually had you on the show when we were a streaming burlesque show. And you said one of my favorite quotes on that show uh, that, that we ever did, which was you were telling us about sea strings. Do you know where I'm going yes. with this? Oh, yes, I know exactly where you're going. <laughs> Maybe I'll find a sound clip of that. <laughs> so, so for uh, people at home that don't know what uh, all the all the different uh, accoutrements of burlesque, a sea string was described by Pickles as a headband for your pussy. Is that what you said? I think it was for your crotch or your snatch. I, I think and think of other things that see, start with the word C. <laughs> And I think that that's what you might have used at the show. I was remember I was there. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, I I was married to someone who was British at the time, but I I don't know that I would drop the sea bomb in that context. Really? The <laughs> sea oh, maybe word I'm is the one. big. Maybe I'm the one who um, said it. <laughs> <laughs> you just did. <laughs> this is all uh, going over my head. So oh, sorry, I have allergies. A cut. <laughs> God, <laughs> I'm not a fan of that word, really? but I can't figure out why. I think it's all in, in the context that it's used. Um, I can totally bristle against it, or I can embrace it like it was one of my, you know, own. It, it just depends. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Like, I, I think if a, if a British person says it, it sounds like way better. Yeah, it's it's super funny, especially if it's like an old lady. Yeah. Old lady. That's hilarious. Could you um, be a British person saying it so that we know the context? Ooh, um, let's see. Hold on. Uh. You don't have to do this. <laughs> don't get oh, into the pressure. Just jumped over my fence. That cat's a weak cunt. <laughs> what about wait? Wait, I missed. Oh, oh, fence. oh, a weak cunt. A weak cunt. So just it's a wee one. It's a penis just and a, wee, a cunt. Just a little weak cunt. Like I, I I'm kind of missing out. Like it's a cunt and a penis. What? <laughs> or, or is, or is. Like is it's we diminutive. Diminutive. Oh, oh. See, British people are weird. Well, yeah. That's like their whole reason for being. It's just to be weird. Just to be weird. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but um, now that we've talked about sea strings, let's talk about merkins because merkins are kind of like a specialty of yours in the burlesque world. Yeah. Um, so my tagline is the gherkin with a merkin. Um, and I do believe I was one of the first San Francisco performers to really embrace the C string. And, you know, I would always ask the venue if that was legal because it's not always legal. Um, Ooh based on, you know, puritanical nudity laws. Uh, but yeah, I I use them for comedy. I mean, I usually, whenever I wear one, there's usually like a giant big piece of fur strapped to it that, you know, makes me look like I haven't groomed ever. Um, I think it's a really good, you know, comedy, comedic relief piece. And, and I like it. It's also when you do that, you do not have to groom before a show. And um, whoa. Yeah. So it's practical. I see. I like that. It is practical. You hear that Klingon Vanna White? <laughs> yes, I'm. I'm going to try to strap my Kling dong on a, under one of those so immediately. <laughs> what? I, I just don't know if you can find any in Tijuana. So I'm just saying. I could make one out of a um, I don't know, some donkey a, a hair skin. A Tijuana merkin. <laughs> Tijuana has merkin. something to do with a hammock. Maybe I don't that's know. That's my, my favorite Herb Alpert song. Tijuana Merkin. Yeah. It's my new, it's my new um, faux queen name. <laughs> the Tijuana Merkin. I could see it. The Merkin. The Merkin. It's all like party in the front and up your butt in the back. Right? Oh, yeah. What is it? Like, and, and I always tell girls, when you wear them, tape that shit down. Because your thigh strength alone is not enough to hold it. So it might just like pop off into someone's face. 
I always just worried it would just fall. It would oh, just fall. see, no, no, yeah, because it's, I mean, it's like kind of up there by like a wire and a prayer. Otherwise, so <laughs> and you don't want it to fall off so somebody sees your flower and your starfish. <laughs> But I think oh, that would be kind of a like I, I could think of like 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 a cool way to die. No, it's like you're, you're you're at like a burlesque show, and then you know someone's you know gyrating doing their dance, and then you have like a little spring loaded merkin, and it kind of shoots out and like kills someone, you know. And then, and then you got to run. It's like very very James Bond, you know, like death trap kind of thing. Oh yeah, I'm like, seeing like like a boxing glove on a spring just yes, coming out, just yeah. coming out of there, just pow pow, pow. you're dead. Burlesque is dangerous. I I actually um, had my face cut by Lady Satan. Um, she what? was doing her. Yes, she was doing her um, with, with Sparkly. They were doing their ice queens ice skating act, and she ripped off her hair clip, which was rhinestone, and threw it in the audience. And I was standing next to a man in a wheelchair, and I was afraid it would hit him. So I kind of like put myself in front of him, and I got hit in the face, and it bled a little. Ooh. See, see, you hear that? You hear that, everybody? You know. She was she was was wanting to save a life. You understand that? that this is very heroic. Like I was like, damn, you know, you you, you, you took a rhinestone in the face. You know, to throwing fast. yourself oh, in the path of a hair clip. It was you like for their art. Ooh. Yeah, it was a moment. That's awesome. Wow, so That's, noble. You're such a hero. <laughs> yeah. And if 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 you if the audience doesn't know who Lady Satan is, you get you got to look her up. Like right now, <laughs> yeah, she's great, amazing. Um, okay, so let let's talk about Weird Al because you are the founder of Tight and Nerdy, which is the first and only all Weird Al burlesque troupe. Um, how did that happen? What's the origin story here? Um, well, I I have never been one of the cool kids, and I've always loved Weird Al. And from pretty much the first time I got off stage, I was like, God, I want to do a, a Weird Al act. And then it was like, no, I want to do an all Weird Al themed show because there's so much. I mean, Al's career has spanned decades and it has spanned every genre of music. And um, you can you can actually listen to, you know, a collection of Weird Al and never really hear the same thing twice, except for, you know, maybe the polka mixes. Um <laughs> And it's there's kind of something for everybody, I guess. And it just seemed like such a natural fit. And um, I am not one of these classic, you know, beautiful showgirls who, you know, will will walk around the stage and, and you know, take off my clothes in a haughty, you know, sophisticated manner. Um, I want to make you <laughs> Must laugh. Must be haughty. <laughs> no, seriously. Like, yeah. you know, I and, and and there's nothing. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with those girls. I think they're amazing. I'm just not one of them. And I would way me- rather make you laugh. And I was like, you know what? I want to do this. And so I shopped it to a few producers, local San Francisco producers, and nobody wanted to do it because they just didn't think it was a good idea. That's how you know you're on to something. Yeah, they were like, no, like that, that's, no, okay, I, I don't get it. And so finally I asked um, Jim Sweeney over at Hubba Hubba if I could have a Monday night show because I wanted to do my Weird Al sh- my Weird Al show. And he was like, okay, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that was literally was like, okay, I guess. And so um, I did it. And I called some of my, you know, closest friends and, and people that I really admire in, in the Bay Area industry, in, including um, Odessa Lil. And we made it happen. And the first night that show was everything I wanted and more. And I was like, I want to do more of this and I want to bring it on the road and I want to I want to travel the country with my friends and have crazy adventures all to the music of Weird Al. You sold that fucker out. That I know, show. right? Yeah. Yeah. Because people underestimate the power of Weird Al. Well, I mean, the beauty of a Weird Al show is that you get people who normally don't come to burlesque shows. Absolutely, um, yeah. And, and and I would say I for a Weird Al show, about 50% of my audience is not the normal burlesque crowd. It's people who hear of it through word of mouth or, you know, on Facebook or the, the you know, weekly paper. And they're like, oh, my God, I, I never knew this existed and I needed to see it. 
And it's it's really special because you get to people don't believe that it's going to be good or it's going to be fun. And then they're like, holy crap, that was amazing. Yeah, it's way more fun to draw in outsiders into the into the burlesque show and open up a whole new group of people to burlesque because otherwise you end up with the same jaded people at every single show. Exactly. And, you know, it's people I think who aren't in the scene tend to think it's all Dita Von Teese. and Dita is great and she is beautiful at what she does. But, you know, there's also people who want to laugh and there's people who want to see, you know, sexy lunch ladies and dancing cams and spam and Yoda <laughs> and, you know, the Brady Bunch. And they want to see that they want to laugh and, and they don't even know what they're getting into. And it's it's kind of that element of surprise that that I love bringing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And people's faces are just priceless in the audience. Having been one of the people on stage, I can look out and you see all these uh, all these amazing fellow nerds just in awe. Like this is happening. It's pretty brilliant. So what uh, what's your favorite Weird Al song? Um, my favorite Weird Al song is, okay, so this is going to be, um, I love One More Minute, and it's not a parody of anything. It's just this song about how this guy, all of these terrible things he would rather do to himself than have to spend one more minute with this person who he doesn't love anymore. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's amazing. And, and it's, it's my favorite Al song. It's a Yankovic original. It is. Yeah. It is. I- his originals are, are are pretty special. They don't get a, a lot of airplay. No, and they should. I mean, you know, even even the ones that you know are in the style of of other bands, but are not straight parodies of something. Um, yeah. You know, Craigslist is amazing. That's a, it's, it's supposed to sound like The Doors. And yes. um, I have an act to CNR, which is Charles Nelson Riley, the scrumptious Charles Nelson Riley, and you know, and it's a style of the White Stripes. And you're like, why does this even exist? It shouldn't, but it's good. <laughs> So good. Yeah, actually, could you describe some of your other Weird Al acts as well? Um, So the first act was um, Amish Paradise, and I dressed as an Amish person, and I hump a butter churn on stage. Uh, I use the butter churn as a stripper pole. Yeah, I mean, including, like, the the good old Nomi Malone, like, licking the the butter churn pole. And and I know that every time I do it, all the girls who I tour with are afraid I'm going to get a splinter in my tongue. Um, And I never have. But uh, so that's one of and it does end in a big fuzzy Merkin. Um, and I have CNR for, you know, Charles Nelson Riley, who wouldn't. And I have I want a new duck because I really wanted a Donald Duck costume. Um, and, and then, the, you know, I've done acts that I've done once and have never been seen again because they didn't quite click for me. Um, you know, I had a, a short lived foil act. I did um, like a surgeon once, which is really difficult. Um, yeah, so, you know, sometimes it clicks and sometimes it doesn't, but it's, it's, you know, that's the fun of it. Shecky, do you have a favorite Weird Al song? Uh, Christmas at Grand Zero. That's a good one. I've, we I've have always, an act to that. I've always loved that one, you know, and I've always just been like, you know, this is so cool, you know, because Christmas kind of is kind of like that, you know, because, because I, I know it's about like nuclear holocaust and, and all that other stuff, um. Uh, or did I say that right? Nuclear or nuclear? Anyway. Nuclear? Nuclear. Nuclear. Um, but I was <laughs> Nuclear. Thought, <it's> like, <laughs> those kids, like, and watching those little fuckers, it's like, you know, that's like, it's like ground zero when they when they wake up and they're like, give me my toys. And they're like, ah. But then it's about the, you know, death. And I was like, okay, that's kind of the same. But, yeah. I can tell you've thought about this a lot. I really have. It's like, yeah. That's weird. Weird all makes you think. But but to but to you know echo, you know what Pickles was saying is yeah, uh, one more minute is is a great great song, um, and I just remember it being on, um, it was showcased on uh, Top Secret, yeah, you know, and uh, Val Kilmer doing that, and I was just like that is so hilarious, so so yeah, totally totally enjoyed that. So Wait, much. I don't think that's true. I just agreed with you, and I don't think that's true. Uh, did, he, did he do that song? <laughs> I don't think he did because I actually have the soundtrack um, from um, Top Secret and it's Val Kilmer singing the songs of Nick. Yeah. 
Oh, okay, maybe I was wrong then. Sorry. But it does sound like something they would sing. Yeah. You know, do you, do you remember This Is The Life? Oh, yeah. That, yeah. that was sort of a tie-in with... Um, uh, Johnny Dangerously? Yeah, Johnny Dangerously. <laughs> yes, Johnny Dangerously. What a great, what a great one. <laughs> what about you, Klingon Vanna White? Do you have a favorite Weird Al song? Um, that will... Well, I've always liked the thriller one, but I can't remember what Weird Al calls it. <laughs> the thriller one? I think that, well, it's like a... Oh, eat it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, it's like, I am not very conversant with your pop music. Um, so, yeah, the one with the, um, the you know, little biker gang. Yeah, well, you have bat lefts to sharpen, so, I mean, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's this is why you were deported. <laughs> wow, <laughs> because I, really? Because I couldn't explain enough um, pop music. That's part of the ice test of whether or not you're a real American. It is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, name three uh, members of uh, your favorite boy band from 1992. And if you can't, you're deported. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. I can't See at all. <sighs> See, she well, I'm going to try to get you a lawyer anyway. She was not a true American. <laughs> All right, so so Pickles, t- what are some places you've traveled to with uh, with your group? Um, so we have done the Pacific Northwest, Portland and Seattle. We've done beautiful Fresno. Uh, we've done San Luis Obispo. We've done L.A. Uh, and most recently, you know, we I've started the Weird Al Weekender here in Minnesota. Um, and it's great because I we have a fantastic theater that we get to do two days of our show. And I bring in out-of-towners and locals, and it just it just works. And it's a lot of fun because I can we can show UHF, we can we've done trivia, we've done karaoke, and um, I get to make it everything that I want. We have drink specials. Um, you know, every year I make sure the Amish Paradise is on the list. Uh, Ooh, which what's is, that? It is a tall, cold glass of milk. <laughs> That people will pay six dollars for. Nice. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we sold out too. Uh, of milk. <laughs> of milk. Of a six dollar glass of milk. You're welcome. That's kind of amazing. Pure evil pickles. Pure evil. Thank you. <laughs> and then can I tell the oh, boring story really quickly because it's yeah. Uh-oh. Um, so, <laughs> so I was doing an act without a giant Merkin, and this is on our last tour to L.A., and I realized when we got to L.A. that I had not defuzzed and um, removed all of my, uh, you know, nether region area hair, and I was like, shays. So um, I cleaned up in the shower, and, you know, we had our show, and I thought I rinsed out the tub really, really well. And, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> because um, poor Odessa had thrown out her back that night at the show, and she jumped in. She was like, "Oh God, I need to take a bath." And I'm like, "Oh God, no!" <laughs> Walks into the bathroom and is like, "Did a Yeti die in here? What the?" <laughs> it was the act shaving day all over again. Yikes. <laughs> I felt so bad because you were in so much pain and I it was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And yeah. so, there are many joys of traveling on the road with your friends. That was not one of them. And I apologize. I, I can Art relate. No, I can relate because that's kind of like living with uh, with Klingon, Vanna White, because every so often, you know, I'd have to clean out the tub after after one of her battles and there'd be like blood. And, and feces and, and human <laughs> gore in there. And I'm just like, lady, can't you just like rinse off before was, you come back home? That was not, I was just trying to shave. I don't know what you're talking about. I was shaving? I, oh my God. I always thought that was after a battle, but that was just for no, it, shaving? It grows like a large patch, like the size of a plate. Oh my God. <laughs> you know that. We were married. I know. I'm just trying to make you look bad. Damn it. She shaves like once a year, so when it's time, it's time. Yeah, it's about all I have um, to have the stomach for. <laughs> and I only do it so I could get through doorways. <laughs> I only do it so you could wear pants. 
Because that because our merkin is like super super you know long and. I only, I only do it so I can use my steering wheel in my car. <laughs> <laughs> my wrists keep getting felted to my thighs. <laughs> Yuck. And then you make sweaters out of the remains, which is nice. It's going green in a way. Yes, yes. I'm so glad you love the sweaters too, by the I way. Do. I do. So, I, I look forward to Christmas every year. I'm going to knit you a Pashima shawl. Out of cling on nether hair. I've got a, I've got a closet full of these pickles. Ooh. Seriously. Um, all right. So, so like when you're on tour, you probably have some pretty wild times, right? You would think, but we don't. I mean, we're pretty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're it's we're usually like traveling too much, and we have to like drive to go somewhere else the next day. So, you know, I think our like what we actually do, and like what our boyfriends and husbands and like fans think we. We do are probably two really really different things uh so it's it's you know i like to call it girls gone mild well you know you travel with a bunch of middle-aged women who take their clothes off (laughs) i know i know it's but you know if if people want to think that we're having sexy pillow fights and like you know playing spin the bottle more power to you but we're probably not yeah if i was with you guys i would probably get kicked out of the hotel room for eating pringles in the bed no, I know for a fact that you would not, because that's like a no. prerequisite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. When they make the, uh, the the reservations, they're like, you know, we have a clause in our contract that we could eat Pringles in the bed, and they're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, there is a tradition uh, with with the Weird Al tour of the stripper buffet. Yes. And, and it's glorious. It's just, you know, stripper buffet is we basically take the desk of the hotel and fill it with all of our snack food. So it's um, chips and, you know, Audrey usually has something healthy like fruit and dried fruit. And, um, oh, Marla Lord. keeps her granola bars like separate so, like, we don't eat them. Uh, she usually keeps them in her handbag. She's like, those are off limits. Um, those are off limits. It's to us. Pearly, I don't even know what Pearly eats, um, except drinking all of the hotel water that's like $18 a bottle. Um, so, yeah, it's but it's just I usually have gummy bears and chips and cookies and um, I will usually drink an entire bottle of Strawberry Boone's Farm at some point. So we keep it real. Out. Yeah. I have so many yeah. pictures of you passed out with an empty bottle. <laughs> See, you hear that, fellas? These girls like to potty. <laughs> we do. We we like to party with snack foods. Exactly. It's too different than this podcast. Ultimately, snacks on snack, snacks on snacks. So guys, if you wow. if, if that, that, that's how you woo them, you know, yeah. It, yeah, we're it like is. come back to the hotel room. We've got boons. We got some takis and assorted flavors and colors. And, and if you're really nice to Marla, maybe she will let you have one of the granola bars in her bag. <laughs> what, what kind of granola bar are they? I'm not sure. Maybe a kind bar? Oh, those ones are really good. I would probably eat all of those if she put them out. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why they aren't available to the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> She's the aunt with the snacks in her bag, isn't she? Yes. <laughs> They're like candy. <laughs> when you're on tour, is there any like song you want to hear over and over again on tour? Um, well, being performed or, like, listening to in the car, because we do have a Hot Cheetos <laughs> and Takis now, um, you know, and it, much to poor Pearly, Pearly hates it, and Marla and I love it, and, you know, Marla and I are like, Hot Cheetos and Takis, and Pearly's just, like, got her hands over her ears, um, she's like, I want to hear Slayer, uh, so, <laughs> and that actually happened, um, so yeah, but we you know we make it work. We only make people listen to it like once or twice. We're not the monsters. Song, the song is like three hours long anyway. So. Well, yeah. <laughs> also done by kids from Minnesota. Yeah. Oh, they're from Minnesota. They are. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I love it because it's like what else would eight-year-olds rap about than snack foods? You know, I, I think it's a great song. 
it makes me happy. Yeah, totally, totally. Well, what's next for Titan? Um, so we have been filming a documentary. <gasps> it's not a secret. Um, we oh, have been, okay. Yeah, no, we've been working on it. <laughs> We've been working on a documentary. Uh, we oh we worked God. on it for, for most of 2017. We actually toured really heavily in 2017. Um, and it kind of broke me. I am really tired and I uh, I need a little break. But um, so we're only going to do the weekender this year, unless, you know, Weird Al wants us to perform at his, you know, Hollywood Walk of Fame ceremony. Al, call me. Uh, we're just going to do the weekender. It's because uh, it's a tradition and it's fun. And I get to have all of my friends here and I get to take them to see the Twine Ball or the Spam Museum or something ridiculous and uh so yeah so this year's going to be kind of a chill year for us while we kind of you know rest recoup and regroup good good and what what when is that weekender um right now we're looking at july it's always in july and i will i have some tentative dates that i will send you Ah! (laughs) okay (laughs) but the people should the people our audience should uh they should generally keep their eye on the horizon of july yes yes yep always in july wonderful well how can folks stay up to date and tight and nerdy uh tight nerdy we have a facebook page um and we we update it occasionally when we're not touring with some weird owl news and some tidbits um so yeah just facebook tight nerdy take looks up like us and you can get all of the info about us if you want to reach out to us for a private booking you can do that too because we will come to your town if you pay us enough uh quick question so is this only is this only uh like for for burlesque women or can men play can men you know, come and play and do performances as well, or, or um, how does that usually work? Like, if, um, if, if, if I was a if I was a performer, you know, how would how would I go about, you know, trying to be a part of this? You know, that is a great question. We actually love having, um, you know, we love having everybody in our cast. All is welcome. You know, whatever you identify with, cool. We, you know, if you love Weird Al and you have an awesome act, let us know. Reach out to us on the page. We respond within the hour. Uh, we actually did um, pick up a performer for the Oakland show because she emailed us and was like, hey, I'm a big fan and I perform with this group and you're going to be in town. And it just so happened that we could put her in the show. So you never know. Just reach out to us. If you want us to come to your town, reach out to us. If, you know, you want to tell us that we're awesome and you want to, like, make it rain on us, you can do that, too. Um, yeah, but we- yeah, because I'm kind of I'm kind of thinking about the like the next time you guys do it. Like you know, escaping out and like going and, and and doing a presentation, like 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 performing or something. I think that'd be kind of fun. That would be amazing. If you are on parole, we would love to have you. That's awesome. <laughs> he likes the new Hamilton song. Ooh, it's fun. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go to a commercial break and come back, and uh, we're gonna discuss the Black Panther movie. And you know what, Pickles, would you like to stay and keep us company? Sure. Awesome. You're in. There's no there's no backing out of this now. Woohoo! Woo! Commercial break. In a world where genetically modified farming runs amok. Cyclux. A genetic experiment to create a three-breasted chicken goes terrifyingly wrong to murderous results. Cyclux. This summer, revenge. It tastes like chicken. What the fuck? Cyclux, a Speak Easily production. Welcome back to Speak Easily Hour Minute Podcast. Uh, Here's the part of the show where we talk about a movie. And boy, do we have a movie for you today. Yes, we do. Black Panther. So what do you guys think? Uh, I loved it. I loved it. Uh, what they did with the prison, which is really great, is is they uh, they let all the black people like leave for like half a day. So so we all got on a bus and we all like the the, the prisoners, the black prisoners, you know, inmates. Well, not prisoners, inmates. We got to go and see the movie and we got popcorn and stuff. I was we were very surprised that the warden did it. <clears throat> we figured it was some some weird kind of white guilt he had, you know, about you know. The, the incarceration system, you know. In yeah, so sometimes that works. Yeah. Yeah, it worked in my favor. Shit, that movie was great. 
Oh, so but only only the black inmates went. Yes, yes. If you if you if you, you had to be like like one th- or you had to be like a like a quarter. Like if you were a quarter, they were fine with it, you know. But for the most part, you had to be like you know full on black. Wow. Yeah. That's oddly specific. Okay. Yeah, full on black. You had to have a nappy hair and everything, and they were like. So, so the, that was what was so funny about it, because like they were still kind of racist with it, but it was like you know, hey, you know, let's go. And we're like, okay, and then we went anyway. It was great. I loved it. Hmm. That's suspicious. So, what, what, uh, what, what about you guys? Did you like it? I loved it too, but I, you know, there's some some things that I had problems with. That's probably because uh, you couldn't understand it. Because if I remember, you saw it in a in a you saw it while you were in Tijuana, so there, it was in Spanish. So maybe something was lost in the translation. Maybe. Oh, was it dubbed over? It was. Yes, he was like, you know, Uno se dobla, black, black, panta. <laughs> Pickles, did you see it in uh, Minnesota? Um, I did see. I saw it twice. Uh, I loved it. I thought it was it. I, it just took my breath away. I, just yeah. seeing it on screen, and I, you know what? It got better the second time I saw it. I'll have to watch it again too. Also, Michael B. Jordan. I'm just gonna say. I that. know. I mean, but I but I had to say, like, I'm really sad that he got killed. That he allowed himself to die because they could have let him live. He could have gotten fixed. And he looks so good in spandex, he would have been amazing in a sequel. Yeah, he was ripped. I was like, damn, brother. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but it was funny because when he took off his shirt, like, I accidentally would have walked up to him and, like, treat him like some bubble wrap. I just wanted to, like, like pop, 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 pop all those things on his chest. <laughs> God. Is that just me? Or? <laughs> See, I thought of, like, candy dots. Yeah. Yeah, candy dots. Like chocolate candy dots. <laughs> Like, I, I don't know. Something about it. <laughs> uh, Shaggy, you make me so uncomfortable sometimes. <laughs> what? I, I don't. I, it just it's little things that pop in my. Oh my god! And one thing I have to say, and just like you guys can be all grossed out if you want, but Andy Circus as Ulysses Claw. Oh, he was so sexy. Oh my god! Oh my god! Was, I found him really strangely hot too. Oh, I don't know what it was about him, like that that weird. I, I thought it was, I thought it was kind of hot, but I also think that his character, I don't know, it felt a little out of place for me because he was so crazy. I don't even know how he tied his shoes in the morning. He just seemed so in, so unhinged that he seemed mildly incompetent. <laughs> I, I kind of got that too, actually. Yeah, I thought you said that. He's like a carny or something. Yeah. Like some weird but hot white trash carny. Yep. <laughs> so English, trashy. Some English trashy guy. Yeah, but I'm not you know, I'm just not used to it. Only his arm doing green screen. <laughs> and um was he always this muscular? No. I, I think he I think he put on a little bit for the uh for the uh, uh for the movie, but yeah, I don't know what it was about him, but I was just like, hot damn. And when they killed him, I was like, oh, no, <laughs> he's dead. I know. that was. I felt like that was a waste, too. <laughs> so many dead people in this movie. Even though he was completely nuts, that he was like a, a, the most caricatured person in the, the movie. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but um, yeah, it was just kind of funny. Like, it was just like, oh. And I, and I have to ask the white people this, you know, uh, so, so Odessa. Like, what did you oh, feel wait, about them killing one of the token white people? Like, were, were you Dude, upset by that? No, I'm Jewish. I'm not even white. <laughs> I don't which, which white person was it? Uh, he did. He died. Uh, okay, so he's a white dude. Oh, oh yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And yeah, in the tradition of speak happy. easily, we're going to ruin this. So spoiler alerts and yeah. trigger warnings and all of this. So, 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 of course, they kill off the bad white guy. But, you know, they, they kept it even because Martin Freeman is, like, the good CIA guy. Yeah, Imagine Tolkien, that. Tolkien. A good white CIA guy in a black-themed movie. Um, but he he's cool. And he's fine. And he, he, he survives. So. They didn't, they I would also hit that. Yeah. Yeah. Martin Freeman's more my speed. I don't know. And he's circus the whole way. Yes. The circus. Yes. I don't know. Mark Friedman, I'll have tea with him, but um, like ah. Andy, Andy Serkis, um, Golem, I would totally do. <laughs> I don't really know about all that, girl. He plays uh, Golem? Yes, he's yes. Golem. What Smeagol. else does he, what else does um, he do? He was also the ape 
Like in um, all those ape movies. The Planet of the Apes. <laughs> he's, he's, I think he's called. Is it? Is it Ulysses? No, not Ulysses. Um, Ulysses Claw. No, Ulysses Claw is is what he's in Black Panther, but I don't remember what he is. In... Oh, um, Caesar, Caesar or something. Caesar. Yeah. Caesar. Caesar. I don't watch those ones because I don't like seeing him as a good person or a good ape. Because it, it, it's too confusing for me. It's confusing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Even though I know he's really just standing there in a green, like, you know, spandex suit with ping pong balls taped to him. <laughs> have you seen like, Have you seen the pictures uh, of him when he does, like, the golem stuff and the stuff? And, like, they showed, like, pictures on the set. And he literally is just in a green, a green thing. Yeah. Like, and, he, and he's all, oh, my God. Rah, 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 rah. Wasn't he in the big screen adaptation of uh, Lancelot Link? Secret Bio Chef? Film? Uh, yes. <laughs> sure. Sure. You know, I'm hoping I'm hoping that he really didn't get killed because when um the when he got shot they didn't show it you know it wasn't like a you know but like you a shot his, shot but, to the head but you, but you saw his body when uh oh when, yeah you when did Killmonger it. showed you know the get out guy you know it's like and, like the guy because that's the guy the, the guy who turned on T'Challa. That was the guy from Get Out, right? And so I thought, damn, like he got out and went. He, he got out, yeah. He said he got out all the way to Africa. <laughs> He's like, he swore off white women and like went to Africa <laughs> and became Wakandan. I was like, go okay. on, boy. I don't know. I'm, the, I'm confused. That's the same. I'm happy you brought up a point, actually, because let's talk about Wakanda. Like, I'm not really good at following like plots in things, uh, especially like sci-fi things, but like. Was Wakanda in Africa in space? No. Is space in Africa? Hidden. Is there like a mountain in Africa that's actually space? No. Are we in outer space? Because they had spaceships. They because they're hyper advanced. You have to understand. Like and and, and and I maybe you weren't listening at the beginning when they were giving like the the, the rundown <laughs> of what happened. So uh, big media. No. Big, I was big, ordering popcorn. There you go. You're like, give me some popcorn, and they're like, you I was know, like, Alamo. like, <laughs> like, fuck this, fuck this, you know, uh, introductory shit. I want some popcorn. You know, all this narration. <laughs> Let me. I need popcorn. Damn it. No. So, so the media hit this, you know, the Wakanda, the 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 the, 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 the nation of Wakanda. This media hit, full of vibranium, right? And then, and then the five tribes fought over it, and then they, the the Panther tribe. They got the, uh, the 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 seed, which grew from the vibranium, I guess, which was nutrient, and, and they used it. How they learned how to use it, I have no idea. Someone probably ate it with some dip and was like, "This is really good." And then they could like lift a truck. I don't know. So he um, right. How does anyone I mean, ever yeah. Yeah. eat anything? Meanwhile, That's, Captain America just makes a shield out of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's all they gave him. They're like, "You can have the shield, and that's it." So. Um, and so they, they, they basically, like, became the strongest due to this plant. And so everyone worshipped them. Not worshipped them, but they, they became the ruling clan of Wakanda. So Wakanda's basically broke up, broken up into five different tribes. And they all work to keep the Wakandan ecosystem going, supposedly. And then the, 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 eight, the eight tribe doesn't do shit because they're the outcasts. So they're like, ha, and we're vegetarians. So, uh, but they're fun. But they're fun, the ape, exactly. The ape guy is a total jackass, but I totally want to party with him. Yeah, he was mm, so cool. Baku. Yeah. Mm. Baku cool. He did not get killed. He will no. be in the sequence. Yeah. Hot. See, vegetarians can be fun, too. No. no. Oh, man. <laughs> there you go. That's so, I thought that was the moral of the story. The vegetarians can be cool. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, the moral of the story, it's all about isolationism, isn't it? It's, yeah, a, it's very the, political. Yeah, which, which brings like into the, the black the secret, Illuminati. Secret Africa technology wealth, you know, and these they're they're like secret magic Switzerland, but they don't want to help yeah. any of the black people. Yeah, that was the big thing. <laughs> and, that's, and then the yeah. thing about it is, like, like, it was problematic for me because the black people aren't seen as valuable in their own right. They have to have secret technology and magic vibranium powers to be special. And the only good black people in there seem to be royalty. But, you know, so that's just me being kind of a jerk. I actually loved the movie. And, um, but it was just, you know, it's kind of like, huh. I kind of, when I looked at it later, I was just like, well, that's, that's interesting. Where's Neil deGrasse Tyson, Dr. Cornell West and Oprah? 
okay. I mean, you're kind of a space jerk, but you have a point here. No, I mean, but that's the thing. Like, I thought that you would, you know, big ain't being Klingon. I thought you'd understand. Like, they rule by, by, by whoever's the strongest. You know, is able to is able to rule Wakanda, and and so that's why you have to keep it secret. His ass. I was like, this is my house now. Get out, bitch! And then threw him off the cliff, and and of course he survived. I was like, really? Come on now. But of course okay. he has to survive, but whatever. Could anyone drink that purple drink yep. and become Black Panther? Uh, yes. It, only if you really were black, purple. though. If, only if you were black. If you were white, oh. if you were white, you exploded. What if you were, like, like five foot four and Jewish and kind of nerdy? Well, you know what? As long as, as long as you got some black running in you, either through genetics or injection. Or through <laughs> the back door. <laughs> Or ah. backdoor injection, you know, <laughs> you'd probably be okay. Okay, just just off off the record, I was going to ask that. Yeah. So, so the okay. See, here's here, oh, here's on. my problem with Black Panther. The one problem I had, they can fix Martin Freeman, no problem, when he gets mm-hmm. shot in the back. But why did they let War Machine in Civil War? Why didn't they do anything for him? He also got shot. Because he's a because he is not Wakandan black. He he is American black. He, that's the thing, you know. Yes, but Martin Freeman is a white dude colonizer. But they felt bad. They <laughs> felt bad. He was there with them yeah. or something. I don't know. They they broke their rules because they're secret Switzerland. That's magic. My my thought. He risked his life. No no. Them. My thought is they were just huge Tolkien fans and they loved his work in The Hobbit and they're like, yay, yeah. we got to save Bilbo and then they took him to Wakanda. His little furry feet. Yeah, I'll, it's buy part... I'll buy that. I'll buy that for a dollar. <laughs> but I I agree with you, Pickles. I was like, damn, why why are you gonna let this white man in? I'd have uh, straight up I'd be like, oh, that's sad. Peace out, dude. <laughs> we gotta go catch Claw. <laughs> <laughs> no, he he took a bullet. Remember, he took a bullet for. Um, oh yeah. Not quite a queen yet. Yeah, he, oh, I mean, yeah. he took a bullet for Nakia, which is awesome. Nikia. But still, like, you know, you have someone who is actually, you know, your your brother, and you don't do anything for him. I mean, they weren't yeah. related, though. They were just friends. <laughs> yeah, but then, like, so um, Eric Killmonger's dad was killed, and then he was abandoned by his relatives. That's a bullshit. Yeah. Man. I, think, I thought that was really shitty. I just thought that, and that was, I mean, even though he was a murderer and he killed his girlfriend or whatever, you know, I just felt like he he could have had a redemption. Nah, Which is disappointing. Like that. Because remember, he didn't know, he didn't know that they were going to, um, that Wakanda was going to come all out of the shadows and be all like, like, hey, everybody, we're Wakanda, we can help everybody. He didn't realize that. He thought he was just going to. You know, be indoctrinated into whatever Wakanda was talking about with their with their isolationism. So he didn't realize that that, that that's what T'Challa was going to do. So that's why he said, you know, just bury me, bury me at sea. You know, where the where, where the slaves jumped off the ship. You know, because he didn't want to be he didn't want to be tied down. You know, he didn't he, he didn't want to be you know part of that part of Wakanda. And so that's why he died. And so I think that's the thing that pushed T'Challa to say, hey. We gotta come out of the shadows, you know. We gotta, we gotta uh, come out, and we gotta be like, you know, we are the Black Illuminati. We're here to help, not hurt. You know, Oprah is our queen. <laughs> and right, you can't take over the world when you're hiding on your space mountain. Well, that's what they were trying to do. That that's what Eric Killmonger wanted to do. He was gonna, you know, take over the world and then colonize. Like that, that's what was so funny about it is Eric Killmonger became a colonizer because like and that's what was so 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 interesting it was this re- kind of reverse you know colonization because they were so insular and then when he was going to send all the weapons out to to all the people the war dogs or the war boys or war dogs that were in other countries as spies so they were literally going to colonize the rest of the world and take over the world so it's kind of funny that he adopted the ways of the colonizer you know right that's his military upbringing though well yeah so, i mean they served it's funny. It's not ha ha funny. No, definitely not. <laughs> there, definitely. you're right. The irony is that we created him. We created the villin. Well, no, actually, the U- yeah. U.S. government and also Wakanda. Well, we gave him the tools. The Wakanda, we, Wakanda created, we created the villain, but it was, but it was the, it was of the Americas that gave him the abilities to, to uh, succeed in his quest to take over Wakanda. 
So but he basically, basically the- used the government for his own ways by becoming a, a Navy SEAL or whatever, like a special ops person. So Because Americans ruin everything. Yeah. I mean, if anything, I was sad that he died because he was such a well-rounded Car- uh, villain the, who, who mm-hmm. people could feel for, and then they killed him. But Marvel has a tr- track record of killing their, uh, killing their, um, their villains for whatever reason. I mean, it's not like Marvel doesn't have a shortage of them. So, I, yay, I guess. <laughs> Pickles, compared to all of the Marvel movies, would how do you think this stacked up? Um, I would say it's one of my favorites. Um, I will freely admit that I'm on a bit of superhero overload. Um, I did not like Civil War. Um, Mm -hmm. I didn't like Guardians number two, and I really liked Guardians one. I thought Guardians two felt a little forced and a little, I don't know. It just wasn't my jam. Um, I'm dying over here. I liked Ragnarok because it was different. Um, uh, But I, you know, Doctor Strange, I was like, yeah, there should be some Asian people in it besides this one sidekick. Um, (laughs) You know. (laughs) Always with the sidekicks. I feel you on that. So it's one of my favorites. I would have to say Black Panther is right up there. Mine mine also. Me too. It has the most to say. It actually has like a purpose, like an an actual artistic and, and political purpose beyond entertainment. Well, I, I had to like it because I'm black, but, you know, oh. aside from that, it was great. I enjoyed it on my own. So there. Ha ha. They'll revoke your card. If you <laughs> don't like. Yes. My, 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 my laminated black card. Yes. <laughs> Are you a card carrying black guy? <laughs> Why, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Easter egg at the end. It was Nice seeing um, the Winter Soldier airing it out in a skirt. That was that was the Winter Soldier. I thought that was Jesus, and I'm like, finally, this I thing know where Jesus came out, and she's like, you know what, Jesus, sorry, we can't let you leave because, like, you know, Jesus is actually black, and then like another black guy would have walked out and been like, hey, brother, and then they would have walked off together. Do you believe Jesus was black? Yes. I I I I subscribe to the to the mini the mini Jesus theory <laughs> that Jesus is any color he needs to be, you know, sort of like Santa Claus. So, um, yeah, because like there was a show called American Gods that that I watched, and then you know, and and I read the comic book because I read comics. Novels can go suck it, but um, so I read the comics, and it was like. And it was about like the gods being real people, being real and walking among mortals. And you know, because Jesus's resurrection is Easter, and Easter was a was a pagan holiday, and so there was a, a an actual representation of 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 Easter. You know, and she was this nice, really nice woman, a beautiful woman, and she had a birthday Kristen party. Chenoweth. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was the movie. That, that was the TV show, but it was Christian Chenoweth. But it was great because. She had a party at a house, which is to celebrate Easter, which was, you know, co-opted by the Christians. And that's, we know, Jesus' resurrection. And so, so at a house, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about the, the TV show because I think that, that really encapsulated it because it was a visual. There was a ton of Jesuses running around because every religion, you know, every, every I guess, Christian religion or, 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 or um, uh, arm of Christianity has a representation of Jesus, you know, and, and they're all different nationalities to fit their narrative. So, you know, there's all these Jesuses running around her house and they're like all like curing people and doing weird faith type stuff. But there's only one Easter because that's, you know, she, she was the, the original person. So I thought that's kind of like cool. So I think Jesus, you know, whether he existed or not is up to whoever, but, but I think Jesus can be any color you need him to be, you know, to help you get through whatever bullshit you're going through in your life. You know, so just I really to help you get through the day. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't think it matters what his color is just as long as, you know, he, he's helping you and, and you're not oppressing people, you know, due to your image of him. I don't know. I think I, I I kind of have a problem with like Kenny Loggins Jesus, like white Jesus. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, it's bad but... because it's and I I don't know. I 
in reality, he probably looked more like Oded for Fair, who is super hot, um, than, you know, Kenny Loggins. And yeah, definitely. Let's not whitewash Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. The whole point is that he's Jewish. <laughs> yeah, he's Jewish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back so to obviously, he, the black, he's, he's blonde. The back to Black Panther. All I have to say is it was great. Uh, I feel bad for Rhodey because if you see the pictures of of how Rhodey looks in the in the new movie, he has these weird kind of like uh, he has these weird kind of um, chaps on that, that that are making him walk, and it looks they look so janky. I'm like, oh my god, you know, take his ass to Wakanda. You know. Seriously, that's not that's just not right. Yeah, I definitely what? Right. I'm who's wearing chaps? Yeah, me too. Yeah, well, um, if you look at uh for, for Civil War, they have a war machine and I guess Tony Stark did some kind of magic technology thing and uh he's got these, you know, full on leg braces to help him walk because oh, he broke his back. But it's like, dude, just send him to Wakanda, yeah. vibranium, yo. Yeah. Yeah. Help a brother out. Send everyone there. Or bring out the machines to everywhere. I mean, you know, like fix the world. It's time to fix the world. What a great, what a great way to end the segment. <laughs> God damn it! I was just, I was thinking about how difficult that would be. It was running down a list in my head. Yeah, because I mean, they go to the UN, right? And they're like, hey. We have the tools, and we're going to share them with you finally. We're going to fix the world. And it ends with, like, someone scoffingly saying, yeah. like, what, do, what could Wakanda possibly yeah, that, do for uh, us? That white yeah. guy was like, what yeah. could you do? And they're like, bow, 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 bow. I got you right here. <laughs> I got you right here. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you an important message regarding the Klingon Vanna White aspirational figure. If your doll's limbs start bending the wrong way and she starts speaking ancient Sumerian backwards, please call KVW Industries immediately for a protection spell and a salt line box in which to bury the doll by the light of the full moon. We've had many substantiated reports of dolls fabricating their own bat lifts, a fancy Klingon sword, and creating blow torches out of hairspray cans to attack their owners. If your doll exhibits aggressive or violent behavior, do not engage. Lock yourself in a windowless bathroom and call KVW Industries immediately. Do not call 911. Due to production issues at KVW Industries, a subsidiary of KVW Inc., we have decided to stop all production of the Klingon Vanna White aspirational figure. At the factory, many dolls have gone missing, almost as if they've walked off on their own. Workers quit without notice, leaving no forwarding addresses. We've had several unexplained electrical problems, a dark spreading stain across the ceiling of the factory, and a swirling dark cloud over the factory itself that occasionally sucks a vehicle or a hapless bovine into its vortex. All other Klingon Vanna White products are safe to use, and we encourage you to continue purchasing from our pantheon of products available at KlingonVannaWhite.com. Thank you. Last segment of Speak Easily Hour Minute podcast for this episode. Um, it's snacks. It's snack time. Snacks it's everybody's on, snacks, favorite on snacks. Snack. snacks on snacks on snacks on snacks on snacks on snacks. Okay. So this time, uh, uh, Shecky, what have you brought us for snacks? So, so for my snack, I wanted to, you know, talk about recipes. See, people okay. don't realize that when you're in prison, you have a lot of time, you know. And so we, 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 we are gourmets, you know, in, in, in the cell blocks. So we, we make fantastic, fantastical, magical foods. You know, and and you have not lived until you've tried, you know, prison cuisine. It is it, it's it's amazing. It, it's some of the best stuff. I mean, fuck Gordon Ramsay, you know, fuck all those people. You know, we got we got it here. We we, we got it here. We, we we got the secret sauce, so to speak. So we Uh-oh. so we have these and so we have these potlucks every so often. The kind of nice get to know yous. You know, it's it's people. You know, kind of meet people and like we, we meet the new fish. And we say, hey, you know, we're gonna have a potluck, you know, in the in the in the common area. And so people bring their dishes, and we talk, we talk, and 
share recipes. It's really nice. It's 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 a really nice uh, time. That sounds really wholesome. It, it is. It is. You know, um, because we try to build community, uh, and we try to like because you know like there's a bit of segregation self-segregation in, in prison and this is a way for us to kind of like break down those walls you know so we have you know we have like the nation of islam you know breaking bread with uh with the white supremacists um and we give them so much in common well what we give them we, we give them a lot of seasoning uh, tips for their food because it's kind of bland um, and then they always are telling like you know them to turn down the heat because it's really spicy so it's it, it's it's quite a sight to see, you know. It's, it's quite a sight to see. Um, so my, uh, my 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 recipe today, and I'm a little nervous because, like, I, I tried very hard to to be inclusive of um, of Odessa's veganness. And thank uh, you. And so the, uh, the 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 recipe that I'm going to do is, is a vegan recipe. Oh, uh, cool! So what you're going to do? It's called prison pad thai. So, what you do? This, this wow. is a real recipe. Uh, you take a cup of noodle, you mm-hmm. know, a cup of noodle. You 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 put in about half the water into it. You know, well, no, so you put all the water into it to cook the noodles. Then you pour out half of the water. You know, it can be any flavor. I, I'm partial. I'm partial to uh, to to pork because I'm not a Muslim. But uh, but yeah, I, I like that. You know, for for you. Uh, Odessa, yeah. I would say like vegetarian, you know, uh, or shrimp. Cause I, I know you like shrimp, so. No, no, the shrimp is shrimp's an animal, <laughs> not not vegetarian. Right? Really? It, yeah. But oh. did did you think it was a fruit? <laughs> well, no, I didn't realize that it was uh, like like I didn't realize things in the ocean were animals. Yeah. Really? Yeah, they they're, they're alive. But, oh, we'll, we'll stop adding shrimp to your food then. Yeah, like, I, yeah, we we were, we thought that was a protein you ate. Oh God, is that what was in the protein shake you made me? Yeah, it, and earthworms. Yeah, it, it was it was earthworms, shrimp. Well, earthworms it was it, 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 it was our version of surf and turf shake. It was a surf and turf shake. Um, I, I mm. that's why it was oh, green. Good. Anyway, anyway, so 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 you have your you have your cooked noodles, a cup of noodle, have half of the water, then you put in peanut butter. So you can either do smooth or chunky, however you want. It's totally cool. I prefer chunky, you know, like my men. Anyway, and then after that, you get a you, you get like a half a bag of spicy Doritos. You can use Cool Ranch, but it kind of muddles up the flavor. So you you crush all that stuff up in the bag, and then you okay. pour that into it, right? And then you put a little uh, Frank Frank's hot sauce on top. You know, you okay, get, gotta have the Frank's. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. It, it's okay though. I know you're white and spiciness might not be good for your digestion. So if you don't want to use it, that's fine. I want to be inclusive. You know, so you don't have to use hot sauce. I think me my GI tract is better than yours is. <laughs> Probably, but still, <laughs> still. Uh, and then and then you want to add as many cockroaches as you can find. You know, may prob- preferably dead because they'll try to escape. You know, you can dice them up with a razor blade if you want, uh, but you put those on top of them as well. And then you mix it all up, and then you have prison pad thai. It's really good, actually. A little spicy, uh, but it's good. Why, why the cockroach uh, garnish? The, no, the, the, the cockroach is a protein, and, it, and they're vegan. Uh, right? Where are you getting your science? But I made this uh, recipe myself when I was in Tijuana, which roaches. I currently am. And yeah, well, without the roaches, I used crickets. Ah, they see, we just don't have crickets in prison. These are uh, super, um, these are super foods. Yeah, it was super. All right, I blew it out. <laughs> Too much Frank hot sauce, huh? I don't know about that. Um, yeah, so like I, it just had so much salt and MSG in it from the um, from the ramen that I used, yeah. and then you know, so I had a major blowout for two hours, so, and then and then I was constipated for five days afterwards. So, a question: Did you use <laughs> tap water or did you use bottled water? Because if you used tap water, you might have gotten dysentery. Just FYI. Oh. 
Oh. It's Tijuana. Yeah. So just Tijuana. FYI. We use toilet water. So because sometimes they just don't give you water here. So we use just a little bit of toilet water. Works just as good. Yeah, I'm kind I'm kinda on board right up till the till the uh the the insects. Why? You know the you know the future. You know there's people in Colorado or someplace somewhere back east and they're and they make they make <laughs> somewhere in Tampa. Flour. They, they they make cricket flour and they make baked goods out of cricket flour now. That and it's because it's a super protein. Crickets are everywhere. That's the wave of the future. I'm just saying. Flour. Yeah, they make they make cricket flowers. I was listening to PBS because I'm cultured, and there was a thing about. You know, cricket flour. These people are making, and they made like cookies and cakes and shit out of it. So yeah, it's supposed to be really good. You can't taste it. It, it tastes just like chicken flour. What the hell's chicken flour? And why have not been using it to fry my chicken? That so sounds so great. Jeez, I just looked up cricket flour, and the the second thing is a cricket flour Austin. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, I had a cricket taco once. What? See? Yeah, so in San Francisco, there used to, there was a Mexican restaurant, and they had all of these like crazy tacos, and it was like you could get crickets, you could get um, like all sorts of game and all sorts of things in your tacos, and um, so I got the cricket taco, and it was spiced beautifully, it, and they were crispy. The bad thing was, um, you were picking cricket legs out of your teeth for like oh, an hour. Yeah. Yeah. I kid you not. Pickles. That I can't even talk amazing. to you anymore. <laughs> but I mean, it's that sounds amazing. You know, amazing. I I am of a mind of um, you know, if it's protein and they can figure out a way to do it that you know I don't get cricket legs caught in my teeth, I'm okay with it. I, I they're bugs. They're, you're beautiful, darling. You're beautiful. See, that's what I'm talking about. Progressive. I mean, if you think about all of the bugs that we probably eat that we don't realize, um. You know, it's not, at least I know I'm eating bugs. I mean, I think candy bars, chocolate bars are allowed to have like 10 legs in them and like tomatoes. Like, it's appalling. (laughs) Yeah. So at least I know that I'm eating them. And, you know, I feel like with what's going on in the world, you know, we may come to a point in 20 years that we may not be able to be as picky. So, yeah, they're spiced right and whatevs. I like that you see they're spiced right. Like, like what if we can buy? I I like that. what if, like, what if they're not spiced right? It's like, oh no, I can taste too much cricket. You know, it's just kind of like ah. Right. If it's if it's too like gamey. Too. We cricket. could buy cricket. You don't want cricket protein. No, they're powder. more earthy. It's no. it's more anything. Um, it, it's like you know, and I'm gonna be gross. It's like how things from the ocean taste like the ocean. It's things from the earth taste like they're from the earth. If you've had um, you know, I've had some like the little worms and things and ants and uh, there. It's just more of an earthy flavor. I, I, I love that you're so worldly in your cuisine. That is so cool. Like, I want to party with you. Like, I, I, I want to yeah, eat I, with you. You guys go eat some bugs. <laughs> There's a cricket, too, cricket protein flour fa- powder. I'm not making a protein shake out of cricket powder. <laughs> you say that now. You say that it's now. It's gluten-free. It's fine. It's, exactly. It's gluten-free. Come on. <laughs> According to Shaki, it's also vegan. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having enough trouble with the pea and and brown rice protein. <laughs> did you did you see that movie Snowpiercer with uh, with Captain America? Like like, like Snowpiercer? No, it's called Snowpiercer, not Snowpiercer. What's wrong with you? Yeah, Snowpiercer. Don't eat the yellow snow. I remember that one. <laughs> it's snow. Piercer, not pisser. Are you making fun of my accent? Did you see it? Did no. you see the movie Snow Pisser? He was drawing his name in the snow. Captain America was 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 drawing was writing his name I in the snow. It funny to see him pee in the snow. I have something. I have something real to say. You know. All right. They were like the, the poor people lived in the back of the train because that's where they were. And they were given these high protein like like jelly jelly to eat. And you found out that the jelly was this high protein mixture of like crickets and some other stuff that was that was basically ground up, you know, and, and people. Well, no, it was just crickets. It's made up people. It was crickets. Oh, and so I, have, I have a confession to make. I, I had my first Soylent the other day. 
Oh no. Yep. Who'd you eat? Soylent. Who'd you I eat? I think that we should review Soylent next time. What was his name? <laughs> I don't know. But it definitely is people. I'll tell you what, Soylent tastes like um, uh, Slim Fast. Okay. Oh, okay. Remember Slim Fast? <laughs> okay. I've been um, eating a lot of corn. Um, I don't know. Oh. It's Q U O R N. Oh, and, yeah. It's mushroom. Yeah, it's like a chicken. Their chicken patties are like bomb ass. I, you know, I, I and, and to be completely transparent, I'm a total carnivore. You know, I, I joke that I don't eat or wear anything unless an animal has le- at least been offended. And, um, and I actually really. I, I dig it. I think it's good. I'm actually trying to eat a little less meat in my diet. Um, and the corn, the, the chicken patties and like the, the chicken strips are actually pretty good. So yeah. how does how does bugs kind of fall into that? Like less meat, more bugs? Uh... Um, you know, I think, uh, well, I don't eat bugs on the regular because I don't have to. But I think that, you know, <laughs> you should keep an open mind for the future about like alternate sources of protein because we may not have the luxury. Yeah, we should have eaten bark and then and then Audra would be happy. I mean, then Odessa would be happy. Uh, she <laughs> eats dust. <laughs> Well, well, as long as it's free range dust, I'm okay with it. Free range dust. Just don't eat the snow piss or snow. Stop <laughs> sir. It. So that was my so that was my 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 uh, my recipe today. So I, I hope you guys tried it. I hope you guys enjoy it. You can take it with or without the cockroaches. If you're if you're a wuss, that's fine. Just whatever. Uh, I am officially calling this show off. We can't talk about bugs any longer. No more bugs. <laughs> snow pisser. Snow, snow pisses. <laughs> it's gone too far. We pissed in the snow. We ate bugs. It's over. It's something you learn in Minnesota to not eat the yellow snow. That's right. Oh, I think it's lemon flavored. Lemon. <laughs> Lemonade. Thanks for tuning in. Speak Easily Hour Minute Podcast. Uh, find out more about us at speakeasily.tv. Uh, follow us on iTunes. Review it. Review it. Just leave some stars in any order and uh, tell us what you think about eating bugs and snow. Uh, what was your? How was your review of Black Panther? Did you like it? Did you like it? <laughs> did, you, did you like it? Yeah. Um, thank, thank you, Pickles, for being here. Thank you, Pickles. Thanks, Pickles. Thank you for having me. And uh, Klingon Vanna White, can you get back here soon? Because um, your cats are starting to frighten me. (laughs) Why would that be? They haven't eaten in a while. Well, you're supposed to feed them. (laughs) Well, they've all circled around her and they're chanting snow pisser. (laughs) They've eaten all the bugs in the house. Now now, now they've they've evolved to to want human. They want cricket tacos ASAP. It's terrifying. Snow pisser, snow pisser, snow pisser. Snow pisser, snow pisser, snow pisser. pisser. You're never going to let me live that down, are you? No. Nor should she. I really thought that's what you said. Well, Shaki, snow pisser. So are we done? All right. We're done. (laughs)